What's up guys, got some more Crowfall action for you today. It's been a while since I've done a Crowfall commentary. I apologize for that, I've just been busy with real life and playing the actual game, but a lot has been changing. Uh, they have revealed their roadmap and sort of given us some short-term to long-term plans on what they're planning on doing with the game. Uh, as well as, they've just been updating the hell out of the game really quickly. Uh, they've largely finished a lot of the uh, the hard work of designing all the back-end systems and all the stuff that you don't really see, like all the stuff under under the covers. Uh, so now they're finally at the point where they can make pretty rapid updates to the game, and we're finally starting to see that. As of the last time I made a Crowfall video, we've gotten uh, a significant change to uh, attributes, which has changed the meta pretty dramatically. I mean, it took something like a, a Radical Cleric, which was kind of like a middling um, spec, into something that is now just outrageously powerful. Um, same thing goes with Rangers. You know, ran from personal experience, fighting Rangers used to be a pretty easy matchup for me in the past, and now it's not an easy matchup at all strictly because the stats have changed and scaling and uh, just changes the way the game plays uh, we've been getting a lot of discipline and class changes we have 6.5 getting ready to come out which is a whole bunch more of uh of discipline and class changes stuff like that optimization i mean the game is updating pretty rapidly they're patching even on uh, weekends and stuff it's it's nice to see so Let's get into the roadmap. I'm not going to cover everything on the roadmap because it's just a lot. So I'm going to cover the stuff that I think is interesting. So in the short term, this is stuff that you're going to see before launch or slightly after launch. Uh, continued optimization, I think you're going to see that just every single patch. They're just going to find um, problem areas. Like There are certain areas in the game where there's like lingering effects and stuff like that. So as they knock those out, that'll be nice. Um, Looking forward to that. I mean, honestly, well, it's, it sounds dumb, but I, every single patch I, I like, I log in. I'm like, oh wow, it's a little bit better, just a little bit better. Every single patch, which is nice. Um, factories. So the factories. I'm not a big crafter personally, but I know that's there's a lot of crafters looking forward to that. Being able to have a blueprint of a sword, for example, and being able to make a bunch of those all exactly the same. Um, there is a decay system on the blueprint, so you can't just make the best sword ever over and over again endlessly. Up next, we have the big one, and that's the one everybody's talking about, and that is the Tournament Hunger Dome Arena system, which is basically a battle royale 5v5v5v5, uh, similar to how it was when we first started testing Crowfall back in the Kickstarter. So, funnily enough, this is not a new thing. This is the very first thing they did. Uh, when Crowfall was first kickstarted and they needed people to test the engine and the original combat model and just all the bare bones like movement moving in the game and you know server basic server stuff right they did it in a battle royale format funnily enough before Fortnite was even a battle royale they were doing battle royale so uh and what's funny about that original testing that was never the goal of the game was to make a battle royale but people actually had fun with it, and it's funny that they're kind of returning to it. So, uh, Crowfall is not a battle royale game. This is kind of its own little side thing. I would, I guess, to compare it to something would be like arenas and WoW. Like WoW is not really an arena game. Some people treat it that way. There might be some people who play Crowfall as an arena only game, but uh, this is very much a side thing, and it is connected to the campaigns. And I consider the campaigns to be the main game. And from what I've heard, the vast majority of the work is still occurring in the campaigns. But the thing with these battle royales, uh, particularly with an MMO, is that they've done all the hard work, right? They've built all of these back-end systems to where they can kind of just throw together this Hunger Dome thing fairly quickly from an, uh, like an architectural like system design perspective. They've done all the hard work, so they can kind of throw together this BR fairly quickly. Yeah, they're spending some development time on it. Yeah, they probably do have to spend some you know, engineering, software engineering time to create, like, you know, whatever, the leaderboard and stat tracking system for it. But largely, in terms of the, you know, comparatively, compared to the actual MMO, the campaign, the campaigns and stuff, this, this, this Battle Royale thing, they could throw that together real quick. And uh, people have been asking for a, uh, a more instanced, you know, I guess, quote-unquote, fair version of PvP, whereas complete open world is always crazy you know you never know if there's you know 25 guys coming over that hill or not which is part of the fun but at the same time it is it is going to be nice to have like a, uh, a more structured you know skill based arena type system and considering i've played the this hunger dome thing before back you know five years ago when they were just using it to test the engine uh 
it's pretty fun, dude. And I'm, I'm excited to see what they've done with it now that they're actually sort of having it be its own little side feature. Now, this is connected to the campaign. I've got a whole thing I could talk about with this Hunger Dome thing. The, the uh, Hunger Dome is connected to the main MMO indirectly, but that's that's probably my biggest gripe with it is that it's not directly, directly connected to the campaign. Um, <clears throat> what I would like to see them do is, honestly, I want the Hunger Dome to be a physical place in the campaign world. I want the Hunger Dome to be like on the siege schedule. Like every six hours, there's a Hunger Dome match. You and your boys go to the Hunger Dome and fight. And it's a part of the in-game world and it's like directly connected. It's not its own little standalone system. The first iteration of the Hunger Dome, it's going to be its own little standalone system. But your characters are your characters, the, the characters that you play as are your characters from the campaign. So that's how it's connected. It's connected via, you know, you basically take your characters that are from the campaign and you carbon copy them to the Hunger Dome. So you have some incentive if you, even if you're a BR, if you're a Hunger Dome only player, right? You have some incentive to get out in the campaigns because you want to get, you know, the disciplines or the vessels or whatever, right? That's how it's connected. That is a connection, but I want there to be a more direct connection. I want the Hunger Dome to be a physical place that is like, you know, Hellgates, for example, in Albion Online, right? I think everybody loves those fucking Hellgates and how they're connected to the overworld. Um, I want to see that, but for Hunger Dome, make it a physical place in the campaign and you compete for the gl gl glory of the gods, whatever the fuck they want to say, but just more of a direct connection. And I think that's something they could do. Uh... And I, I mean, for everybody's really excited for this Hunger Dome shit, me included. Uh, but my only gripe really is that there just needs to be more of a connection to the main game, which is the MMO. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited for that, for sure. I mean, I'm a big arena nut and wow. I mean, I fucking love that shit. So why would I not be all about this? It should be fun. It was fun in the past when it was janky as fuck. It's going to be interesting to see what it's like all these years later with all the polish we have now. Next up, we have another pretty big system coming online, which might dramatically shift the game, and that is a handshake system for sieges. So right now, there is a siege schedule, meaning that if you own a keep, you know, two times a week at 9 p.m., that keep is up for the taking, and you have to defend it, or somebody's going to come and take it, and it's at the same time every week, no matter what. With this handshake si siege system, a guild can plant a, you know, I, I assume some sort of bane tree or something, on your keep and say, hey, we're going to attack you at, at this time frame. And that's that's how it works. And maybe the defender gets to pick the time frame. I'm not sure on the specifics. But, um, yeah, so you will actually declare a siege and say, hey, we're coming. Get ready. That'll change the game pretty dramatically. I'm curious if it's going to help the little guy at all. Crowfall right now has a pretty serious problem in that uh, really only... Like, four guilds in the game can actually hold a keep. Because uh, otherwise, if you're, like, this small or mid-sized guild, you just can't hold a keep because there's really no incentive for the bigger guys not to just come down and kick your sandcastle down for the hell of it. But if they actually have to place down a very costly Bane Seed or, you know, whatever the mechanic is, if they actually have to commit and, like, spend a serious amount of uh, resources to declare a siege on you, then maybe you'll see a lot less of this... Ah oh, man, let's just kick the little guy and burn his shit down because haha, it's 9 p.m. on a Thursday and we're bored. Um, that'll be interesting because you know it does it. It's gonna be hard for a, a Crowfall guild to really like get started. Uh, you really just don't see Crowfall guilds right now. Uh, you know, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's really just the same old fucking guilds doing the same old shit. There really aren't like up and coming guilds really. Uh, which sucks. It really sucks to see that because they just sort of get kicked down with the way the uh, siege schedule is. There really isn't any incentive for the big guys not to just show up at 9 p.m. with all their fucking dudes and say, hur, hur, let's fucking kill it. So, uh, yeah. Will that be better? I don't know. It might be worse. I'm not <laughs> I'm not super optimistic, but we'll see. Uh, we have a uh, three-faction rule set coming back. Uh, three-faction rule set was the original rule set, um, but this should be good. Three factions are, it's really good for new, like a, an entry for new players because they have teammates. You know, if you don't have a guild and you're in a default faction with other people, you just have some more friends. It's a little easier from a social dynamic. When we did the wild hunt back a long time ago as the earth faction, uh, that was a really fun moment in the game. You know, anybody that was a part of that will, will attest to how much fun that was just to have like 
just a bunch of friends. Like, you just had, like, a bunch of randoms, new players. Like, the new players absolutely loved it because they had, like, people they could talk to. And they had a foothold in the world that uh, wasn't quite as hopeless. When you, you know, when you go into the dregs with no guild, dude, it is hopeless. It is fucking hopeless. You have no, no fucking friends, no help, no keep. But with the Wild Hunt and with a faction, uh, you actually might have a keep. You might have a, you know, you might have a little bit of a home base, a little bit of a footing to, to where you don't feel so fucking hopeless uh so that'll be good uh another thing they're doing is they're going to start mailing out the collector's editions for the kickstarter backers and anybody that uh, bought one so yay we're gonna get our fun shiny shit now on to the midterm systems these are the things that are coming uh i believe after launch uh first one a big one a skin system so they actually are already making skins and they've already gifted out a few skins they have skins for mounts right now um it's a little janky with how you actually do it but they are they do work um but we have mount skins right now. Uh, they have started uh, gifting us player skins. We don't have them yet, but they've started, you know, basically saying we're going to get them whenever they get this online. Uh, like some sort of fire sword or whatever for being a backer. So just more more skins, more emotes. Uh, big one, though. They said pets. Pet skins. So are we going to be getting some sort of pet-like thing or some sort of, uh, you know, non-combat pet? My idea for a non-combat pet, by the way, dude, give make... A, an eagle non-combat pet that you can summon and it uses the spirit crow tech and you can scout with it that'd be dope hey just saying free idea uh another thing we got coming a stealth and tracking system so i guess they're not super happy with the way stealth is working so i guess we're going to be getting more advanced stealth mechanics and more advanced uh I, I don't know if tracking means anti-stealth or if tracking means like literally hunting down other players either way I'm intrigued. Next up, we got a universal PvP leaderboard. Uh, I'm all for this, dude. I'm all for any sort of stat tracking or just um, any sort of... What's the word? Any sort of uh, system that kind of gives your character a history. I really, really love... I love the WoW achievement system and the WoW statistics system so much. I really like... Maybe this is just me, but I really like being able to look up a character on the the WoW uh, Battle.net and uh, and go through their achievements and be like, wow, this guy's you know he was around back then, you know he was he was there, you know he you know he's got these Ulduar achievements, you know I really like that. Any sort of system that gives your character a history and like a backstory and you know can really you know bring up those member berries, anything that can feed into that, I think is just great, especially for a campaign type MMO like Crowfall, uh, especially for a PVP game like Crowfall, where there's going to be those memories and all that dope shit that happens. I mean, there's been, I, the game hasn't even come out and there's already been a lot of awesome stuff that's happened in Crowfall. So any, any, any system like that is great. And even if it's just a kill tracker or, you know, whatever, uh, still I'm all for it. Uh, improved caravan mechanics. Uh, I mean, I guess, uh, I guess they're trying to make pig running a little more fun or interesting. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do, but, uh, whatever, uh, free building and dregs, uh, meaning that you can put a keep wherever you want it rather than on a, in a specific place. Uh, I'm not too optimistic for that. Honestly, dude, I really don't. I'm, there are a lot of people that are all about this free building shit. I'm not one of them at all. In fact, I think it's just a waste of fucking time. I think it's going to be uh, pretty cheesy. If anything, you're just going to see people building like really exploity buildings and fucking what, what's the what's the shape? Everybody builds diamonds because that's the most efficient shape. You're just going to see a bunch of dumb shit. And even if you can't build like exactly what you want, it's just I don't know. I, I kind of like it the way it is. I just think it's it's going to be stupid. It's probably just going to be stupid. So they can prove me wrong with that one. But uh, I think free building is largely a waste of time. Uh, building decay. I'm all for this. So right now, um, I think there needs to be more, uh, of a penalty for just going around and taking a bunch of shit, especially when it comes to keeps. If there is a reason, I think there needs to be a reason to not just go over and, and just try and take everything on the map. So I think we're going to start seeing some keep upkeep costs and, uh, some things like that, but I don't know. Will that help with the whole, uh, haha, let's just go kick down their sandcastle. Fuck these guys that have, you know are a smaller guild than us probably not but we'll see if the you know again if the if the handshake system will help with that but that should help some and also building decay helps you know if you have something you have to if you have to keep your uh 
If you have to continually maintain your keep, that's keeping people in the world. Otherwise, uh, they lose, right? Siege weapon revamp. This is definitely needs to happen. The siege weapons are lame as fuck. Uh, they're just terrible to use, honestly. Every time I've used a siege weapon, I've been like, what in the fuck is going on? Uh, and they just could be better, so I think everybody's cool with that. Um, I would like to see them, like, actually powerful. Like, actually, like, like, oh my god, you get hit with, like, a catapult. They're, I don't know, they're just janky right now. They're just, I don't know, they're silly. I'd like to see them be very powerful and very expensive. Like, very expensive. Um, but powerful. So, uh, another thing we got coming that's exciting. Uh, parcel-to-parcel interactions, meaning that... Uh, this piece of land can talk to this piece of land, meaning that you can have some sort of territory control system. For example, let's say in order to capture a keep, not only did you have to capture the keep, but you had to capture the um, outlying outposts. Or maybe, let's say if you owned all three out, let's say you owned every outpost in a zone, you get a buff, you know, some sort of buff for owning them all. Right now, they can't do things like that because they don't have the ability for the parcels to talk to each other. But, uh, with a system like that, you could do a ton of cool stuff. You could have an actual, like, you know, trenches kind of warfare where it's like, oh, they're moving up our map, let's go stop them. And you kind of can more easily more easily predict the traffic patterns of players when they have to move in a more predictable way. And right now, you can kind of just go like, I'm going to go cap the thing up in the north and then go cap the thing up in the south. Um, which I think there needs to be some of that. There need, definitely needs to be some of that. Otherwise, uh, Otherwise, yeah, you just can't do anything with a smaller group. But, uh, yeah, still, still cool tech. I'd love to see, you know, uh, like outposts get, uh, this is my, one of my ideas from a long time ago, but let, let's say it's siege hour, the outposts are now enhanced and the outposts in that zone for the siege give you buffs. So now not only is there a, a siege battle at the castle, there is now a battle at all of the surrounding outposts because those outposts give you very like powerful buffs during the siege hour. Love to see some stuff like that. Absolutely. Um, they're going to be giving us bags for inventory management. So let's say, um, let's say you want to throw together a few backup sets of gear rather than just throwing all that gear in your bank. And when you need it, you have to go and click through the scroll for the bank, find the chest piece, find the gloves, find the weapon, find the, all that stuff and find it all individually. Let's say you could take a bag and throw all that, all that stuff. As you create that backup set of armor, throw it all in a bag. And when you need it, you just pick up, pick the bag out of your bank, open the bag and you got it all there. That's going to be great. I think everybody's really excited for that. Another thing that's cool, we're getting items that can proc. So uh, right now there's not any sort of like weapon enchants or anything like that where your skill can, you know, proc an extra attack or proc like a fire damage or anything like that. But they're going to work on getting us that. So that'll be neat. Next up, they want to expand the amount of weapons you can get for each class. So right now, there's classes like Templars that only have access to one weapon, which is the Greatsword. Maybe they give them maces or uh, great axes or something. Uh, that's always fun. More customization is good. Uh, we're getting dyeing and colorization for armor. Again, that's always great. Uh, a new class. If I had to guess, the new class is going to be a bard. A long time ago in a QA, they... Uh, I think somebody asked a question about the bard discipline and how it's uh, it's really underutilized. They have this they have all these really cool bard songs and uh, like this twisting mechanic that nobody actually ever uses. And uh, they said that they're really not happy with it and that they might end up just removing the bard discipline and renaming it to something else and eventually doing a bard class. Well, they have actually gone and renamed the bard discipline, broke it apart. And now we have a new major discipline called Entertainer, which is shit. It's terrible. Like, no one is ever going to use it. But if you were a bard class, that might be a lot more of a uh, a lot more of an attractive discipline than it is right now for the way the game is. So I think the next class will be a bard. It kind of makes sense with a PvP game like this. This is a game where I could just very clearly see there being a bard class. It just makes sense. Um, I'm all for it, dude. I am all for it. I think it'd be dope as fuck. I love the song mechanic. I hate that it's not utilized. I hate that people just pick their favorite song and just run one song. It's really stupid. They have this really awesome twisting mechanic with the songs and the timing, and nobody does it. Like, nobody does it. They either just auto... They just autoplay. They autoplay one song. It's dumb as hell. I'd like to see that system actually used. <clears throat> so... Uh, next up, we got more disciplines, including disciplines with more, like, sexy effects, like shape-shifting and uh, things that grant, like, different 
like styles of combat rather than just like granting individual powers. Right now, they can make the baseline disciplines very easy. Uh, their power creator is really cool. It's, uh, I mean, from what it looks like, my dumbass can make a power in Crowfall really rapidly with just taking a stock animation, just take an animation, an effect, and it seems like they've got this system set up. It probably took them years to get this thing working the way they have it, but uh, the power system they have for Crowfall is really cool. I think that's actually tech that they might license out to other developers, or they might be trying to sell it. I think they created something really cool with the way their uh, their power system works. So, um, yeah, disciplines. Uh, I imagine a game like Crowfall, like they can just spin up new powers and disciplines lickety split with uh, hardly any real uh, amount of work, uh, relatively anyway. Um, next up, we got Perpetual Guild versus Guild. This is going to be, I assume, uh, Dreg's Light. I, I'm assuming that the the best stuff is going to come from the temporary Dreg's campaigns that end. However the perpetual guild versus guild world i imagine is going to be like the infected but guilds so it's going to be more of a uh, an overall scoreboard of how you're doing throughout all of the campaigns and you take your spoils back to the perpetual guild versus guild world and that acts as the long term scoreboard for uh, the mini campaigns that's how i see it playing out um i would like to see it play out like that uh, personally i think it'd be really cool if the if the perpetual guild versus guild world was kind of where everybody went all in and used all of their spoils from the, the temporary campaigns, they brought the stuff out from the temporary campaigns and then launched a huge assault in the perpetual guild versus guild world. I think that would be super cool. Another huge change we're getting is guild and alliance caps. Now this might dramatically change the way the game is played and might help with the problem of the fact that there's not really up and coming crowfall guilds. It's just incredibly difficult to get your guild, uh, if, you, if you're a guild that cares about like owning keeps, it's really hard to get that, that ball rolling to where you actually can own a keep because the bigger guys just come and smash your shit for the hell of it, even if they don't want to take it. Um, but if there's guild and alliance caps, you're not going to have as many of these big conglomerate guilds that just completely bully these guilds of like 30, 20, 30 players. Uh, so maybe that'll help some. Right now, the Guild Alliance cap in the game is just outrageous. It's 2,500. It's 500 players per guild, and you can have an alliance of five guilds. So absolutely ridiculous. That needs to be something that happens in the game. Uh, hopefully a little quicker than this. This is on the midterm list. I don't know why that. I don't know why that can't be a short-term thing, honestly. Um, but the up the, the the lack of up and coming guilds in Crowfall is. Pretty sad. I mean, I, I just I think it's gonna be really hard to see a guild that doesn't just immediately like either join a bigger, more established. I mean, right now the only people that own guilds are alliances that are are the only um, people that own keeps are alliances of guilds that have been playing the game for years. Like, there's not like a brand new guild out there that's just out there that own, even owning a keep, much less do like doing well in the campaign. Uh, I mean, you just can't hold on to one. It's, yeah, it's rough. Um, so maybe with Guild Alliance caps, that'll help some, and it won't be quite as bad. But we'll see. I mean, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, the up and the lack of up and coming guilds in Crowfall certainly is an issue. It seems like it's uh, it's <laughs> it's rough. I mean, this is a problem in all open world PvP games, but. Uh, there's certainly some things in Crowfall where it's like, really, the Alliance cap is 2,500 players? Like that's pretty fucking dumb. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, uh, more biomes! Yeah, more biomes coming in Crowfall. We're going to uh, hopefully see some like desert and swamp and more racial architecture. Right now, all the uh, stuff you see in the game are like stoneborn ruins. Everything is stoneborn. The portals are stoneborn. Uh, the broken ruins and shit like that. It's all stoneborn. But eventually, we're going to start seeing Elkin and, and Imbari and uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that'll be awesome. I'm really looking forward to that. Stuff like that will help make the game feel fresh. I would love to see volcanoes and, like, I don't know. Stuff like that, I think, will be really awesome. And, all, I mean, that's just work. All that is is just art. So it just takes time and money and, yeah. But it's not something that I think is technically an, any sort of technical issue other than just have to have artists slave away. Start cracking that whip, J. Todd. Uh, and then, last thing, animal and creature taming. I actually put a question mark beside that because I don't know what that actually means. Maybe you'll be able to tame a mount rather than b buy one. I don't know. I don't know exactly what that means. Maybe that 
will uh, be a part of the pet system, the non-combat pets. That is something they wanted to do. Uh, maybe the pets will be a utility. I really don't think we're going to get combat pets. I think combat pets are just a fucking joke. And I think they know they're a joke. But I would love to see some like utility pets, right? Like Maybe you had an eagle that, um, again, like I said earlier, that you could take control of and scout. Or you had some sort of pet that was used for tracking. Or, I don't know, you could do lots of cool utility style things with pets that I think would be kind of neat. So, um, yeah, that's the Crowfall roadmap. Not even all of it. That's just the stuff that I personally want to talk about. Uh, but yeah, Crowfall is uh, coming along, man. I think this game is going to come out uh, reasonably soon. I think they still have a, a good little bit of beta left. But the cadence of the updates is pretty fantastic. I mean, they're literally patching on the weekends. Like, really. Like, busting their ass on this thing. So, uh, I'm, I'm excited. The game is shaping up. There are some serious issues, though, for sure. Nothing that will make the game unfun, though, in my opinion. But, uh, yeah, definitely definitely some stuff. Uh, the optimization is getting better. That was the number one thing that was just, like, really kicking the, the, what, the game in the balls. But it's getting, like, pretty fucking good. Like, if they can start locking down some of these really problematic areas, like, there's just a few areas in the game where, like, I literally walk into this place and then the I have 150 critical VFX and they just never go away. Uh, that kind of stuff... It sucks because then you just have to restart your client, right? And then it's all better. But uh, they start locking down that, and yeah, I mean, dude, it's coming. It's coming together. I'm pretty. I'm pretty excited. I, I don't think Crowfall is going to be this crazy multi-million dollar or multi-million player game by any means. The Hunger Dome thing is very exciting. I think that's gonna. Uh, I think that's gonna help a lot. I mean, I think that's gonna get people into the Crowfall ecosystem. Uh, I think that's that that's their main goal is they want to get people into the Crowfall ecosystem and and give them just give them a taste of the crocane because the vast majority of people that 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 are that have taken the Crowfall drug are in it. They might be begrudgingly in it. There are a lot of people that play the game that hate the game or at least you would think they hate the game by the way they talk about it, but they're still playing it. And anytime you know we, we talk about this all the time in in my guild and my alliance uh like we'll talk shit about the game and then always come to the conclusion of we've been playing this shit for five years. Like we're all still here for a reason. We're all still here. So regardless of what you know, our you know, whenever we rag on the game, the game is still fun, and you still get those magic crow fall moments that are uh, the reason we all play. So uh, yeah, this was a long video coming in close to half an hour of just ranting. Uh, whew! But yeah, crow falls coming together. Enjoying the hell out of it. I'm really looking forward to the uh, to see what they do. I mean, the cadence of the updates, as I said, is is fast. I mean, they are this shit is pumping out. So yeah, see you guys next time. Have a good one.